Welcome to the Live Mormon Get Rich video. According to LDS scripture, you can become rich simply by living the Mormon gospel. And we will go over about a dozen of these scriptural passages, mostly in the Book of Mormon and some in the Doctrine and Covenants. Okay, Jacob 2 verse 19 out of the Book of Mormon. And after ye have obtained a hope in Christ, ye shall obtain riches if ye seek them. So first you have to get a you have to obtain a hope in Christ and then ye shall obtain riches. Okay, so the Lord can bless you with riches. This is in uh, Helaman 6 verse 17 again in the Book of Mormon. The Lord had blessed them so long with the riches of the world, so that is a blessing from the Lord, the riches of the world that they had not been stirred up to anger, to wars, and to bloodshed. So their riches help them not to get angry and to have war. So who do the riches of the earth belong to? Well, in D&C 38, verse 39, it tells us, The riches of the earth are mine, and that, mean, that means God's to give. So the riches of the earth are mine, God's to give. Okay, those who belong to the church became far more wealthy than those who did not belong. And this was because of the steadiness of the church, which I guess you could say the faithfulness or the holiness or keeping the commandments of God. The steadiness of the church. This is in Alma chapter 1. And now because of the steadiness of the church, they began to become exceedingly rich, having abundance of all things whatsoever they stood in need, an abundance of flocks and herds, and fatlings of every kind, and also abundance of grain, and of gold, and of silver, and of precious things, and abundance of silk, and fine twined linen, and all manner of good homely cloth. I guess that's good quality cloth. And thus they did prosper and become far more wealthy than those who did not belong to their church. So those who didn't belong were kind of poor and living in poverty, but those who belonged to the church became very wealthy. And there was another group of people in the Book of Mormon who became exceedingly rich because of their prosperity in Christ, or you could say faith or hope in Christ, led to them becoming very rich. Fourth Nephi uh, chapter 1, they had become exceedingly rich because of their prosperity in Christ, and there began to be among them those who were lifted up in pride such as the wearing of costly apparel, some, some very nice clothes, and all manner of fine pearls, as shown above, and of the fine things of the world. So, again, exceedingly rich because of their faith in Christ. Okay, so if you follow Christ, he can make you rich. And this is D&C 38. The rich have I, Jesus Christ, made. So the rich have I Jesus Christ made. He made the rich, and I have made the earth rich, and I hold forth and deign to give unto you greater riches, even a land of promise, a land flowing with milk and honey, so a very good land, and I will give it unto you for the land of your inheritance, if you seek it with all your hearts. So it sounds like a good land for your inheritance, kind of uh, put aside for a certain group of people. And this shall be my covenant with you. Ye shall have it for the land of your inheritance and for the inheritance of your children forever. So forever and ever. And there's uh, many passages about getting the land of your inheritance in the Book of Mormon. And we'll go over some of those. Okay, so if you put your trust and faith in the Lord, he can bless and prosper you in temporal and earthly goods. Basically making you rich. Helaman chapter 12 we can see that, that the Lord in his great infinite goodness doth bless and prosper those who put their trust in him. Yea, and we may see at the very time when he doth prosper his people, yea, to the increase of their fields, their flocks, and their herds, and in gold, and in silver, and in all manner of precious things of every kind and art, they do forget the Lord. So it's kind of a double-edged sword. The Lord will give it to you when you're, when you're righteous, but then your pride goes up, and then you'll start to forget the Lord, and then you will lose that which he gave unto you. 
Okay, so some people went into a city here in Doctrine and Covenants 111, and the Lord was going to give them the treasure and the wealth and the gold of this city. So let's read this one. I have much treasure in this city for you, for the benefit of Zion. I will give this city into your hands, that you shall have power over it. So also power. And its wealth pertaining to gold and silver shall be yours. So the Lord was going to give them the wealth of the city, the gold and the silver, and power, and treasure. For there are more treasures than one for you in this city. Keep the Lord's commandments, and ye shall prosper, and you will have a land of promise. And this is in 1 Nephi 2, verse 20. And inasmuch as ye shall keep my commandments, ye shall prosper, and shall be led to a land of promise, yea, even a land which I have prepared for you, yea, a land w which is choice above all other lands. Probably a lot of uh, flora and fauna and uh, water and, and ability, ability to grow crops and your flocks. And here is a very similar scripture to the last slide. Keep the commandments, and you shall prosper, and you will have a land for your inheritance. Okay, 2 Nephi 1, nine, I, Lehi, have obtained a promise that inasmuch as those whom the Lord God shall bring out of the land of Jerusalem shall keep his commandments, they shall prosper upon the face of the land, and there shall be none to molest them, nor to take away the land of their inheritance, and they shall dwell safely forever so sounds like a pretty good deal live mormon get rich okay so here is nine more passages nine more scriptures in the book of mormon that talk about the lord giving a land of their inheritance the promised land a land of their inheritance if they were righteous first nephi second nephi third nephi and one in mormon okay another passage in the book of mormon they gave heed and diligence to the word of God, which led to exceedingly great prosperity. Basically, becoming rich when you heed and follow the word of God. This is Alma 49.30. Yea, and there was continual peace among them, and exceedingly great prosperity. That means riches. Exceeding, exceedingly great prosperity in the church because of their heed and diligence which they gave unto the word of God. So this picture here, the road to ruin or the path to prosperity, it's time for you to choose. Do you want to become Mormon so that you can become rich? Take the path on the left. Okay, another passage in the Book of Mormon, Helaman chapter 3. Call upon the Lord's holy name and you, you can become exceedingly rich. Okay, so let's read this one. There was exceedingly great prosperity in the church. There was exceedingly great prosperity in the church, insomuch that there were thousands who did join themselves unto the church. And so great was the prosperity of the church, and so many of the blessings which were poured out upon the people, that even the high priests and the teachers were themselves astonished beyond measure. So that had to be pretty rich. So rich that, that they were astonished beyond measure, the Lord did bless them. Thus we may see that the Lord is merciful unto all who will, in the sincerity of their hearts, call upon his holy name. So what do we have to do? Call upon the Lord, or call upon his holy name in the sincerity of your hearts, and you will become rich. Okay, so what else can we do to get the blessings of the Lord and to prosper in the land and become rich? Alma 62 tells us, in the first uh, part here it says, And they did pray unto the Lord their God continually, insomuch that the Lord did bless them. So what did they do? They prayed unto the Lord their God continually, and then the Lord blessed them according to his word, so that they did wax strong and prosper in the land. So if you do that kind of praying, you will become rich and prosper in the land. All right, so part of being a good Mormon is paying your tithing. That is 10% of your income. Uh, don't worry, you will get blessings from paying your tithing, probably more than the 10% that you pay. 
And according to the Book of Mormon, if you keep all the commandments, be a good Mormon, pay your tithe, etc., etc., you will become rich. So why not pay your tithing? All right, so the Apostle Henry B. Irene in the Enzyme magazine, 2005, said, If we decide to be a full tithe payer, paying your full 10%, and if we are steady in paying it, steady in paying it all the time, blessings will flow. So that's good to know. It's also interesting that on the United States money, uh, both bills and coins, it says, In God we trust. So that's kind of interesting money wrapped up in the saying of religion, In God we trust. Okay, also the Apostle Heber J. Grant stating that if we obey the commandments of God, we will prosper in the land. And if we pay our full tithing, we will also be blessed in material affairs. So let's read this. This is in General Conference in 1899, some time ago. I wish to bear my testimony to the saints that all of us who w will obey the commandments of God will be prospered in the land. So he got that straight out of the Book of Mormon, right? Sacrifice doth bring forth the blessings of heaven. So here we have uh, Abraham being willing to sacrifice his son Isaac by stabbing him with a knife. Sacrifice doth bring forth the blessings of heaven, and Abraham was willing to do it. But then God stayed his hand at the last minute. Okay, if the people will pay their tithing and offerings, they will be blessed in their material affairs. It's good to know. I bear witness to you as an apostle that material and spiritual prosperity is predicated upon the fulfillment of the duties and responsibilities that rest upon us so that material prosperity can't be obtained without paying your tithing and keeping the commandments of God, just like I said in the Book of Mormon. Okay, so we have a story here about the Apostle Joseph F. Smith's mother. I guess she was uh, going through some hardships and probably somebody suggested that maybe she should not pay her tithing. Well, what did the mother of the Apostle Joseph F. Smith say to that? You ought to be ashamed of yourself. Would you deny me a blessing? Would you deny me a blessing? If I did not pay my tithing, I should expect the Lord to withdraw his blessings from me. I pay my tithing not only because it is a law of God, but because I expect a blessing by doing it. So maybe she could actually get more out of paying tithing than the 10%. You get more out of it than what you pay into it. By keeping this and other laws, I expect to prosper and to be able to provide for my family. So maybe a little superstitious that if, if you don't pay your tithing, you won't prosper and you won't be able to provide for your family. Maybe you'll live in poverty. But if you do pay your tithing, you will prosper and you will be able to provide for your family. So this was a story, Apostle Joseph F. Smith, about his mother again. General Conference 1900. Okay, so keep God's commandments. Call on his name continually. Pay your tithing. Be a good Mormon. And you will prosper. You will prosper in the land. Live Mormon. Get rich. All right. So according to Mormon scripture, when you get to heaven, the streets are paved with gold. Beautiful roads paved with gold. This is a golden road going into what looks like a pretty great kingdom. So that's interesting. Uh, one of the great things about heaven is you have golden roads. But that's going to do it for this video. And I thank you for watching Live Mormon Get Rich video.